Hi there, Garrel here from the Music Zoo. And we are in the Wells Fargo Center with Jeff Schroeder from the Smashing Pumpkins with a copyright safe rig walk up. Hi, Jeff. Hi, how you guys doing? Thanks for having us. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to run through the whole rig. We're going to start with the most important part to me, and that would be the guitars. Yeah. So, um, my main e guitar is a Yamaha Revstar, the new series. This is the standard line. Nice. And, um, this originally comes with P90s, but I had these switched out to mini humbuckers made by Chris at Black Cat Guitars in Boston. Black Hat Guitars? Black Cat. Black Cat. Guitars. And um, other than that, though, it's fairly uh, stock. We also did change out the tuners to locking tuners, although the, the standard tuners work quite well, but on tour, I like to have locking tuners. Just make string changes quicker, faster, um, very secure. Um, but this is a great sounding guitar, and I can uh, show you a little bit kind of the, the sounds I'm able to get. Cool. Even though they're yeah. a little less output than a regular humbug, they still sound great distorted, so. Right. Um, I use it on the very first song that we play in the set, it's called Empires, and I'll play kind of the main riff to that. Cool. Yeah. Sounds so great. See, yeah, so you yeah. can see it's still got I mean, I use high gain amps, so it, I got plenty of gain on tap, but right. this guitar sounds really great, articulate, but what I really love about it, it sounds both amazing, clean, and distorted, but the, I mean, the construction on these guitars is immaculate. I mean, the stainless steel frets, um, the bridge, everything is, they're just really great guitars to play. There's also a really cool, another section of that song I really love on this guitar, is a little kind of Van Halen kind of thing. Yeah, sure. hey, that sounds like our kind of time. Very cool. Yeah, so other than those couple of modifications, it's pretty much an off-the-shelf rep star? It is, it is, yeah. Very right, nice. Yeah. And and the great thing, I mean, the construction on these is phenomenal. Right. I mean, they're, I, I can't say enough good things. Right. And they look great too. They do. I know I got a lot of compliments on this burst. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know it's a very handsome looking guitar. Yep. <laughs> okay, so this is my main E flat guitar, and this is another one of the new Rev Stars. And this one um, is completely stock, except we did put the locking tuners I see. on that too. Uh, it does have the Yamaha pickups yeah, in it still? The Yamaha pickups, which sound awesome, and the five way position switch, which is great. I'll kind of show that. We did change these knobs mm -hmm. because. Um, I, I just kind of used to these, and so right. they feel good in my hands. But the regular knobs are great too. So, um, but this guitar sounds awesome distorted. So I'll show a little riff. Um, like I use this on zero. So, so there's that. But this guitar also sounds really awesome clean. I use it on the song I to play this opening riff. And I use it in a kind of a out of phase position where it kind of, I think it does like a split coil, splits the coils and kind of gives you that kind of position four of a strat. Right. Kind of, which is, you wouldn't normally think of getting out of a guitar like this. Right, with two humbuckers. Yeah, yeah. So you can get really nice, beautiful, chimey, clean sounds um, even out of a guitar with two humbuckers. So I love, love this guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Also a really good looking guitar as it well. It is, yeah, yeah. I think this color is called Hot Merlot. Nice. With the like <laughs> the subtle racing stripes in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in it, you know, I'm just, when I see photographs from the show, it, it always looks really cool. Yeah. On stage. So. Love it. Cool. So this is a I don't know what year it is, probably around 2015, 2014, a SG eighteen oh two gold top, which usually comes with P nineties as well that I switched out to mini humbuckers and these were also built by Chris at Black Cat in Boston. Um, this is a phenomenal sounding guitar. Uh, I use this as my main drop D guitar. Right. So I play like the new, our newest single, Beguiled. Play that riff. Um, yeah, on this guitar. And you see it's got, even though their mini humbuckers still got a lot of action and harmonics right. from the pickups. Right. And yeah, this is a killer guitar. I use it on Silverfuck, Beguiled, um, what else? Maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> the Yamaha SGs and SBGs are some of my like favorite body shapes. I remember when I was a little kid, I yeah. saw those in like 
some vintage guitar book and just like instantly was smitten. So. Yeah, and this thing just sounds phenomenal. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, in the construction, the Japanese construction is just, it's, it's exquisite. Right, really, top notch. Yeah, fantastic instruments. So the next guitar comes with a very special guest that I'll let Jeff introduce. Yeah, we are lucky today that we are in his backyard. We've got Adam Reaver of FU Tone. Hey now. And uh, just had a, actually a great day off with him. Street hockey, <laughs> FU headquarters, I mean, w and capped off at an amazing restaurant, Dante and Luigi's, where we had incredible Italian meal. If you're ever in Philly, go to Dante and Luigi's the oldest Italian restaurant in the country. That's Only, a plug. Only the best. That's yeah. a plug. Only the best. <laughs> and but, music zoo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so this is um, a 100% custom made Pacifica built right. in the custom shop. In, in Calabasas. In Calabasas. Right. And it's, I have it set up in East Standard. I use it on like Today and um, some other e-natural songs. But I mean, it's hard to, this guitar has been completely customized from the ground up. So it's, We've got stainless steel frets, maple board, actually Powell Ferro fretboard, 24 frets, Seymour Duncan Hunter pickups, um, SSL5 in the middle, but the locking system has been completely upgraded right. by Adam here. And he, let him explain what this has got on it. This is super cool. This guitar, I think we did this in Chicago yes, the first did, time. Yeah. So titanium hardware, titanium saddle inserts, titanium posts and yes, yes. on the back we could go to brass big block heavy duty noiseless springs brass claw and jump back to the front oh, yeah. we did a full titanium lock nut on this one that's amazing got the full treatment yeah yeah and we're big fans of the fu tone systems we've done some runs with charvels yeah, yeah. and other yeah. brands like that with that stuff from the factory yeah. i see you got some scalloped action at the yeah very top yeah and too. it's scalloped from 21 to 24. I mean, hey as a as a you know homage to steve Vai, who i'm a big fan right. big fan of his it just his playing his songwriting his Personal ideas style. yeah <laughs> he's just a great you know, such an inspiration. Yep. And um, so I thought since I had the opportunity, they were like, we can do whatever you want. I was like, can you scout 21 to 24? Right. And so they did, which is great. But, you know, to, to talk more about these upgrades, you know, people often ask, can you really tell the difference? And yes, you absolutely can. And every single one of these things makes a difference. Um, and I have to say, you know, it, it's. I think a lot of people can get their guitars to like that 90 percent percentile right. of, of good sound. It's really people like Adam you. that you get that extra 10 percent of like really elite um, sounding tone. Right. And, and and it's really things like clarity, sustain, note definition, um, and then tuning stability. Of course, is, yeah. is huge. Um, and so I can't say enough about Adam as his, his products, but also as a friend. He's Thanks, been a really man. great supporter and happy he's here today. <laughs> Very nice. You rule, the Yamaha guitars rule. This guitar is amazing to start with. And music who rules. And now we're joined by Jeff's tech, Trace Davis. How you doing? Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, Trace and is a very, very humble person. He's very well known for his company voodoo amps and he's done tons of custom builds and modifications for i mean small artists like acdc aerosmith um, never heard of him richard ford no from clue. guns and roses is actually <laughs> using his amps on tour right now yes yeah that's um true. yeah so very nice he's um not only a, like adam not only a great person but a total asset on the tour. I think he's retubed just about everybody's amps on this tour already. So and that's a lot of amps. Yeah, yeah. Much. There's a lot of lot of tube amps on this tour. There's been so. a few. <laughs> this is the tube amp tour. Yeah. Yep. So and now we'll run through some of the effects and amplifiers. Yeah, we'll talk about just basically the rig in general. Um, so out of my guitar, we don't use wireless. We still are hardwired, and we use this Megami. I believe that's the twenty. 452, is that right? Yeah, it says right, well, whatever. It's, yeah, Mogami cable, really great, super, I mean, we haven't had any issues. No issues whatsoever. It's and a silent quarter inch end. When you pull it out, it doesn't pop. Right, which yeah. Which is lovely. It's very important in an arena, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. nothing sounds worse <laughs> than a guitar popping in a, like really a, space, like a, a PA at 110 decibels. <laughs> <laughs> so out of the guitar, I go into a Donlop Joe Bonamassa Wawa pedal. And 
I know I've had a ton of different wah pedals and I think this one just sounds great and you know Joe Bonamassa obviously knows good tone and I think he like the vibe of this wah is like the sound of wah like it, it really reminds me of something like Jeff Beck Truth Era oh, nice. kind of late 60s kind of wah um, not like you know it's very warm not too many piercing highs just and very musical right and i really like it because sometimes i like to kind of turn it on when i'm soloing i don't do too much wah action kind of leave it more like a michael shanker kind of cocked wah. yeah i was gonna ask if how you were using it yeah and and it sounds great for that right so out of that then i go into this uh, analog man bino boost which is uh, a copy of a dallas, dallas range, range mesh. yeah yep. range mesh which was something that a lot of people in the late 60s use you know mm-hmm. You know, it's called the Beano Boost because right. what the Clapton, the Clapton, yeah, Clapton, yeah, yeah Blues Breakers album. Right. Where's you reading the, B- the John yeah. Mayall? The yeah, Breakers, yeah. Right. And I mean, my amps have a lot of gain, so I don't really use it for gain. It's really more of like an EQ feel thing. And this one has been um, slightly upgraded, and as Trace can explain. It, it has, uh, like the old '60s, you know, Dallas Range Masters. Yeah. They use the old Mullard transistors, right. the germaniums, if you will. Yeah, right. So, uh, Mike over it over at Analog Man was kind enough when I said, hey, you know, I want to get one of those because a buddy of mine had one. Right. And, I, and I fell in love with it, you know, and so he goes, I, I've got a handful left, and so he built that for us, and and it sounds great for leads. It does something that's very identifiable right. in the lead yeah. tone and also incredibly easy to play. Right. It almost feels like a, a string gauge lighter or something yeah. when you're playing. It's, yeah. it's, right. it's really great. It's Adds that inspiring. sustain, stuff like that. It sort of more indeed. of a feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, more a sustain, more feel, easier to play. Yeah. Harmonics are great. Yeah. And Analog Mike makes some great pedals, that, and the yeah. King of Tone oh, and all does. the stuff that he does. So yeah. good. And he's such a nice guy, too. Yeah. So yeah. great, great company, great guy. You can't go wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even though I have, you know, a rig with, like, loops and a switching system, right. these things really like to see the basically front. guitar, yep. you know, soon, it, 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 after a buffer, it's, they just, the germanium transistor just doesn't react Respond. in the same way. Yeah. yeah. So after the Beano Boost, we go into a TC Electronics Bonafide Buffer. That's because we, you know, we're doing a fairly long cable run from the stage to the rig, and I gotta say this works really well because, I mean, I'm using a pretty long cable, like 25, 30 feet. That's probably 30. That's a 30 foot cable. Yeah, 30 yes. foot cable, and you know, we don't do. We're not like Iron Maiden or Judas Priest where we're running around back and right. forth too much, even though I would like to, but we don't. <laughs> we, don't. <laughs> we don't. So I thought, well, it's coming. I could use a shorter cable, right. but we tried a, a 50 or we 20 did. We, we did a couple yeah. a couple club shows right at the beginning of this tour. Yeah. So we actually tried about 15 feet less on the cable, and there were, oddly no enough, difference. there was oddly hardly any audible really? difference whatsoever. So it's a really good buffer, I have oh. to say. Yeah, made really no difference. Buffer. So we go with the long cable. And so if I ever feel like I really want to run over to James' side and yep. you right. know rock the crowd over there, I can do it. Right. And no, I'm not going to suffer from any tone loss. Right. <laughs> and the essentials on the tour. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, gotta love it. There's on the board, just since we're here, you know, these are just Dunlop expression pedals and right. so they do volume and whammy functions that I'm for the helix that okay. I'm using and standard voodoo lab pedal power two plus for right. its you know industry standard industry standard yeah <laughs> then out of there we go into uh, the helix and um, the helix is kind of the central place where a lot of the signal flow routing and stuff is programmed and assigned and so I go guitar into helix and then the helix has four external loops where you can put pedals whatever effects anything in these loops so out of one of the loops I actually go goes out of the helix into the front end of the rev head right which is these are rev generator 120 mark 3 I believe heads and um, phenomenal we'll talk a little bit more about them later um, so it goes then out of it so into the head out of the head back into helix right and then out of helix back into the power section of I see. the rev so it's, it's called it's kind of known in the industry as four cable method right yeah um, which what it basically allows you to do is it puts the preamp section of the head in, into the helix as a assignable effect right and then I can shape kind of whatever signal type of routing that I want. So I can put effects before the preamp and effects post the preamp so I can get 
if I want to put like a phase or a flange or more of like a Van Halen thing that's in front of the distortion, right. I can do that. But if I want like a be beautiful delay or reverb post, yeah. I can do that as well. And it, and it's great because I can do that in any combination, completely um, programmable for every single preset. And so it's wonderful. So it, so that's in one loop. I have a few more pedals down here that are in the other loops. I got the Origin FX Revival Drive, and I have the Revival Drive set to uh, preamp mode. Right. So essentially, this is a preamp that goes back into the power section of the head. Right. So it's like having two more channels, Yeah. Um, which is great. Um, I have a Vox Saturator, that's just a distortion pedal, and a Ingve Malmsteen Overdrive by Fender. And nice. that's just more of a lead boost too. Right. But right now, since I've started using these rev heads, I don't really use those distortion pedals much. I use this because there's certain sounds I can only get from that. Right. But these rev amps have so much gain that I don't really need to use it. So do you use the revival drive in conjunction with the preamp on the rev or it's sort of one or the other? One or the other. I see. Yeah, I one see. or the other. In, yeah, so when I use that, I'm bypassing the front end of this head and only right. using the power section. Right. Yeah, so this is cool. basically just a power amp for that. Yeah, yeah and, and this pedal has been designed to, to be used that way. Right. And because it uses like uh, what MOSFET um, kind of technology to emulate what a tube amp would be doing. Right, yeah. yeah. Like a discrete overdrive or preamp sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it's similar. You're, you can now take, well now as of maybe eight years ago or so, you can take a high powered MOSFET that runs on the same voltage as a tube. Right. And you can kind of get very kind of close, right. you know what I mean, um, to a tube, but you can put it in a very, very small package. Right. Which is obviously very attractive to a lot of people. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's actually a fairly simple rig, although it might not look like it. <laughs> um, yeah. You really either are putting some effects in front right. of the head, or you're putting them in the effects loop. Right. And just you're able to just switch back and forth, you know, yeah. from depending on how you program the patches, right. you know. Yeah. So it makes it easy. It's very, very versatile. Very versatile. And yeah. the guilty pleasure is the making the logos to change color with the channel. Yeah, right. yeah, we can show that, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of cool. And in theory, I could use the preamp models that are in Helix into the power section of the head right. if there was like some sound that I really wanted that I maybe couldn't coax out right. there. But I'm not actually doing that at all. I use, like I said, it's, it's mostly this and a few songs. There's a sound that I that I want, like an old school Marshall Plexi kind of right. sound, and I use the Revival Drive. Right. Yeah, because this is a very modern, high gain. Right. Contemporary uh, voice stamp and yeah. some, but there's a few times where I need that really classic, right. kind of just blown out um, plexi kind of sound. And that well, you don't want a hundred watt super lead just for that one yeah. section or so. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So. And then finally, we talked a little about these heads. So the Rev Generator 120 um, is a four channel head, and it has a clean channel has a they call this kind of more like a vintage voice channel but it's i would say it's kind of reminds me more of like a jcm 800 right type of sound um so there's a lot of gain on that right. too but i use that for kind of like my mid distortion sound and then um i think what these amps are really known for is especially channel three the purple channel which i use for my high gain rhythm and then channel four is uh i use for leads right so and these amps are fully midi um, they have a two notes um, load box built in, so you don't even have to use this head with a cabinet, right. which is incredible. So you, you just go for, right for to home, the yeah, house. yeah, or for recording at home oh, or right. front of house, and and but we actually use um, external torpedoes just because <laughs> if for just. I want to use the externals because, say, for example, the two notes did go out. Right. I don't want to have to use the, the even though the heads do sound very similar, I really like the sound of this head because I just gotten used to it. So I see. if that goes out, I don't have to switch, switch heads. I can just, box. yeah, yeah. It's just more, that's like a, for us out here, that is a little bit more flexibility. Right. But the two notes on the head works yeah. great too. Right. But there is a little, a little more flexibility with tone on on the external unit as yeah, well, where that's that's options, a little more yeah. stripped down. I see. Basically, so yeah, we have more tonal options to choose from on there, yeah. which makes it nice too. So right. you can really fine tune it. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. great. So that be, so on that note, out of the head, 
it goes to, I have a 412, a Marshall 412 cabinet right. with vintage 30s. My, Hidden somewhere in this arena. Yeah, yeah. No we, have, we, where. we keep them off stage <laughs> in an ISO cab with the Sure SM57. And then, and then the other signal goes, but before it goes to the cabinet, it actually goes through the two notes, Captor X. And on this, I'm using a, uh, a Friedman cabinet with vintage 30s, right. mic with a 57 and a 421. Right. And then out of this, we go into <laughs> this retrospect juice box, which is a tube DI. Right. Just to kind of analog the signal one more time right. after it's gone digital. After all the conversions from sort of analog to digital back. And I have to say, it, 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 it's, it's not a massive difference, but there is a difference. Right. It's, and it's really more of a feel thing. Right. It feels really great under the fingers, and, and the distortion characteristic feels a little more, more like you're playing in front of a cabinet, even though we're on in-ears. Right, exactly. Yeah. It sort of melts everything together yeah. once it hits this yeah. section. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it really does. Yeah. And then one last thing. So we'll show here. One of the great things about the Helix pedal board is that I mean, basically, in the digital realm, which is so great, is any of these buttons can be anything. I have it set up to where my presets, like we'll go to Empires, which is the first song we play. So my presets are up here, they're like, you know, Empires, Bullet, Today. So when I hit Empires, it gives me, I have basically four snapshots in, within this preset, which is my rhythm sound, my lead sound, and clean sound, and the, the, my end solo sound. Right. And what's so cool is you can assign colors to these buttons. And so if you look, this preset comes up set on the clean channel. And if you look at the amp, the clean channel is blue. On the red. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right. And then when I go to the rhythm channel, it changes to purple. And this <laughs> yeah. corresponds with it. And my lead is the red channel on the head. And it corresponds on my pedal board, too. Right. Which is... I know it sounds silly, but when you're on stage and you want to know, like, oh my gosh, right. what channel am I on? I actually know. Right, because yeah. it corresponds. There's yeah, unity between yeah. the way that the head yeah. responds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. In the heat of the moment, so to speak. It's just total nerd stuff, but it's it's fun for me. <laughs> I, I when, once I figured out I could do that, I was like, oh man, this is like so cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then as far as your monitoring setup, it's all the in ear monitors. Yeah, we don't have any monitors on stage, or the, everything's in ears. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. That was fun. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having us for sure. Thank you, Trace, and thank you to Adam as well yeah. as back there. This has been great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Yep. And thanks to the folks at Yamaha as well for yeah. connecting us.